Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today we'll be talking about whether we need to be motivated only by spiritual things. Now, of course, to answer a question like this requires knowing what a spiritual thing is. Spiritual things are things that aren't composed of parts. For example, a thought or a sentiment. God and the angels are both spiritual in nature as well. None of them are made of parts. Many other things the same way. Patterns, for instance, and this is in contrast to material things, things that are composed of parts, like physical bodies or possessions. So again, the question for today is, should we be motivated only by spiritual things, or is it all right to have material motivations too? Let's look at some Bible passages to see what they have to say about this topic. Therefore I say to you, be not solicitous for your life, what you shall eat, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body more than the raiment? Matthew six twenty five. Every time I hear this verse, my first reaction is, of course, just so long as life isn't less than food, or the body less than clothing. Nobody wants to be starving or without any clothing to put on. However, life can certainly be more than these things, and they are, after all, just the tip of the iceberg of good things that God can give to us. Some people might say that this verse downplays the value of food and clothes, but the truth is, it really doesn't. It doesn't say that food and clothing are valueless or should be discarded. It only says there are other concerns in life, and that's certainly true. Food lasts us for a week or two, perhaps. Clothing for maybe a few years, if we're lucky. But a good relationship with God can lead to heaven, which supplies people's needs for all eternity. It is sown a natural body. It shall rise a spiritual body. If there be a natural body, there is also a spiritual body, as it is written. 1 Corinthians 15.44 If used in the normal way, the phrase spiritual body is a contradiction in terms, since a body is material, which is the opposite of spiritual. So this phrase here refers to a specific type of body, which is greater than the body that we have. The reason why St. Paul would use the word spiritual to describe a superior body is that the spirit is superior to the physical body. Our will, which is spiritual, controls the actions of our body, which is material. So the phrase can refer to a body of a superior type. The first man, Adam, was made into a living soul, the last Adam into a quickening spirit. 1 Corinthians 15.45 The phrase, the last Adam, refers to the role Jesus took on in acting as our representative before God and paying the price for our sins. However, Jesus wasn't made into a literal spirit because a stomach is a part and spirits don't have parts. Therefore, spirits can't eat, for example, fish. Yet Jesus ate fish and honeycomb in front of the disciples after the resurrection in the Gospel of Luke. And they offered him a piece of a broiled fish and a honeycomb. And when he had eaten before them, taking the remains, he gave to them. Luke 24, 42-43 So we know Jesus wasn't turned into a literal spirit, but was given a superior body, like the kind we've been discussing. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot possess the kingdom of God, neither shall corruption possess incorruption. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty. Here, the term flesh and blood refers to our nature as sinful human beings. Corruption, in this case, refers to sin, not merely doing certain actions that in this life are wrong, but doing something which is contrary to the will of God. However, we do know that Jesus entered into heaven without leaving his physical body behind. And it came to pass, whilst he blessed them, he departed from them, and was carried up to heaven. Luke twenty four fifty one. So we know that at the very least there will be bodies in heaven, and therefore physical things. So in desiring heaven, it's perfectly acceptable to desire the physical, permanent things of heaven, if we have a hard time being motivated by its spiritual things or qualities. Next, can we expect to have our own body in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.